Okay, we're in the year 1855. And remember, 1855 and 1856, these two years were the peak years for essay writing for George Eliot, or as she was known, Marion Evans. This is before she's writing fiction. And in 1855 and 1856, she's submitting dozens of articles through various literary and intellectual magazines. Now, I'm going through them all. <laughs> uh, it, it's no coincidence that my subscriber count is uh, in, a, in a negative derivative. Anyway, I'm losing subscribers left and right. Gee, I wonder why. Nonetheless, I am going through all this. So next up on the docket is a book review that Marion Evans submits to the leader on the 16th of June, 1855. And that is um, translated in English as Menander and the Greek Comedy. Uh, the original is in French. I will not attempt to pronounce it. Uh, but it is by Guillaume Guizot, a, a French scholar of Menander. Um, now look, I've never heard of Menander. Have you ever heard of Menander? I never have. I've never heard of him. So Wikipedia to the rescue. Wikipedia. Uh, Menander died roughly 290 BC. He was a Greek dramatist. He wrote 108 comedies. He won a prize at the Linnea Festival. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> um, most of what we know about his work uh, ha is because we know it from other contemporary writers to Menander, because pretty much everything by Menander has been lost uh, through the ages. Um, and only one play, Discolos, has survived uh, mostly complete. Everything else is fragmentary. Um, and this was even more the case in the time of, of Marion Evans in 1855, because I think Discolos was discovered very recently. So yeah, all that was known was scraps. Nonetheless, this French, call, this, uh, French scholar, Guillaume Guizot, decides to write a book about what we know of Menander. Marion Evans wants to review it. So, um, the first thing I'd really like to discuss is the the style of writing that these book reviews are starting to take. Um, we're in 1855, and during this time, uh, George Eliot, Marion Evans, whatever, uh, begin submitting articles to a, 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 a series of articles, book reviews, essays, that are just called Belle Latra, meaning beautiful letters. And it's she's writing intentionally in this over uh, luxurious style of writing um, just overly overly uh, embellished style of writing um, this was the style of the time I liken it to when you go to a rock concert and then suddenly uh, you know you're having a great time and then all of a sudden there's this 20 minute drum solo good god well it may be exciting at the time but it's just overly luxurious it, it doesn't really <laughs> the um, the song is not the point uh, at that point when you start breaking into a 20 minute drum solo well in this case the book review is not necessarily the point as is the beautiful writing now that was the style of the day so for instance in this book review uh, Menander and the Greek comedy Marion Evans begins by uh, 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 imagine dear reader imagine picking up this book, Menander and the Greek Comedy. Well, it's much like uh, going to some pleasant area that you pinpoint on a map, to this southern village. And uh, <laughs> you see this, uh, these charming houses. These houses are lit up by the glowing sun. Uh, you see this cluster of tall trees. You see tame goats. You see a dark-complexioned woman filling water pitchers. You check into a hotel and you look in the guest book and, hmm, there's a Mr. A.B. Now, who could this Mr. A.B.? I bet he's a charming person. Let us go up and find Mr. A.B. And we can have a pleasant talk and maybe a five-hour journey uh, discussing the town history. Maybe Mr. A.B.'s 
dubious theories and maybe his dubious hopes and quite even his indubitable sorrows. Well, these feelings that you have, dear reader, upon this imaginary journey to the southern village is quite like the feelings you have when reading Guillaume Guizot's <laughs> Menander and the Greek Comedy. <laughs> so you, you see what I mean? There's this lengthy introduction. Very similar, really, in style to the lengthy um, pastoral cinematic introductions that would be in novels like Adam Bede and Mill on the Floss and even, you know, Romola, although that's more mythic of an introduction. So you see those lengthy introductions start right here in this belle lettre style of writing that she develops as a book reviewer. It was, it was the style of the day back then. Well, anyway, she gets on to her book review and she talks about Menander, how everything we know about him, although he was popular in 290 BC, wildly popular, written over a hundred com comedies, um, everything was lost. Uh, through the Middle Ages, they had to survive the Romans, the Byzantines, and now only recently it is that these German scholars uh, <laughs> are piecing together uh, the, the fragments that we have from the from the ancient classical Greek masters, um, you know, they, they find them in, in in trash heaps and lining bird cages in Byzantine monasteries, and they piece them together. And we we have a sudden interest in these people, you know, these these ancient masters, and we try to piece together their lives based on what little we know about them, based on scraps. And again, as she's done in previous book reviews. Uh, and essays, George Eliot uh, compliments the Germans on their scholarship. She says the German scholarship is impeccable. They are leaders in literary scholarship. But again, she says they are nonetheless terrible writers. <laughs> I need to count how many essays George Eliot has said this about the Germans. Brilliant scholars, terrible writers. So she's, she does that again in this in this book review. She goes on to talk about the fragmentary life of Menander. What we know about him is basically in fragments. That Menander fit the style of the domestic comedy. And he was a satirist of Greek domestic life. And she gives a couple of interesting examples that she shares. Basically, or mainly, she draws the distinction between uh, the Greek plays that depict uh, deities or royalty. Um, you know, gods, goddesses, royalty, sometimes intermixed. Sometimes you can't tell the difference. Whereas with somebody like Menander, this is more of a domestic comedy. And you get a more of a sense of what, you know, commoners were interested in during, you know, the... Two, you know, 290 BC or whenever it was that Menander lived. Again, tie that back to, to George Eliot. What is she interested in writing about mostly? Mostly the Midlands, the commoners, especially in her early novels, Adam Bede and Mill on the Floss, which were written just a few years after this book review. People that work with their hands, milkmaids, carpenters, etc., well, in this one, she's talking about what interests her and Menander is that he writes about these same types of people. She highlights two examples, and one of these examples is Menander's idea of the emancipation of women. Basically, that in the stories that she's read from Menander, that women have the ability to travel, mostly. They're not confined to the home. Uh, they're not confined to domestic dr drudgery. They can travel, explore, uh, the the you know their world uh, that was limited to them, but nonetheless they could explore it um, with their husband and independent of their permission. Huh, very interesting. Another thing she highlights is that she says that the ingenuity that Menander focuses on is not necessarily again not from the deities, not from the royalty, not from the wealthy, but from simple things like a chef who is commanded to cook sardines 
for some local royalty. And oh, you know, he's he's a hundred miles from the oak from the nearest uh, body of water. Uh, can't get sardines readily. So what does he do? Uh, some quick thinking. He uh, chops up some <laughs> some potatoes and seasons them with extra salt and uh, <laughs> spices and cuts them into the shape of a fish <laughs> and serves it and uh, fools the royalty. Hey, this is the best sardine I've ever eaten. <laughs> well, it's just a lousy potato and a radish, but he's not going to say anything. So it's this kind of ingenuity. It's, it's a comedy, but it's, it, it's the, the ingenuity shown in this comedy by just common people uh, that our book reviewer, George Eliot, really likes. So anyway, that's our book review, Menander and the Greek Comedy. And thank you for watching.